your future spouse. So we're just going to let the messages flow today, see where it takes us. Um, I have this little pillowcase here to kind of soften the noise. So I'm going to start off with your astro dice and then we'll get into tarot and then we have oracle cards. At the end, we'll get some spark romance matchsticks. We're going to use our grab bag today to get some details about your future spouse. We'll get some love tokens and then at the end, we'll read your um, message from your future spouse's higher self. So going to be hopefully a nice long cozy reading so get comfortable and let's get into it so intimacy with your future spouse how will they express their love to you we've got the fifth house Ooh, and we have virgo here i really love this combination so the fifth house is associated with leo your future spouse is going to be a very um creative person in terms of how they express their love towards you and the way that you guys are intimate with each other. This is someone who's going to be really spontaneous, someone who's going to plan, um, you know, like surprise weekend getaways, you know, um, a person who's going to surprise you with gifts, someone who's going to surprise you because um, there's a really like spontaneous unexpected energy with this person and so um they really like to do that they like to treat you but in an unexpected way so this is the type of person to throw you like a surprise birthday party um that sort of thing or you know how um in like car commercials at christmas time they're always showing advertisements where you know they have the car with the big bow and they're like guess what honey look in the driveway and then they pull up with this you know car with the big red bow that's the kind of thing like your future spouse would do like that's their energy and so that's definitely a way that they express their love towards you and this person likes to keep you on your toes you know like they're very passionate they like to keep things exciting they like to keep things interesting but then on the flip side of that we have this grounded virgo energy and so this reminds me of acts of service. Like this is the type of person who will help you run your errands and will help you um, get done anything you need done like around the house, like a honey to-do list. Um, what do you need that needs to be fixed? That sort of thing. And so it's like we have this fun, exciting energy, but then it's balanced out with this Virgo energy, which is very grounded and very helpful. And so right now, of course, we're getting into love languages. We're going to get more into the intimacy of it, but that's what I'm getting so far. And of course, this could indicate that your future spouse has some Leo or Virgo placements, or they have um, a lot of fifth house placements in their birth chart as well, or sixth house placements. Okay. I will also say, um, and this is a more specific message, but with Virgo coming through, Virgo can talk about like health and fitness, daily routine, the physical body, um, and oddly enough, um, Leo and Virgo, like the stomach area. And so it's a more specific message, but for some of you, your future spouse is going to have really nice abs or a really nice tummy. Um, so anyway, that just came through. Um, they definitely have good habits in terms of their health and their fitness level. Okay, so I kind of want to get into, I guess like the first intimate moment between you two. Like, how does that come about? Let's see. And this isn't an 18 and up reading, I should say that. We're not doing that. Okay. Group one. And a big thank you as well to the subscriber who suggested this topic. And a big thank you to my guides and your guides for coordinating these messages. Group one. Intimacy with your future spouse, the tower. Okay, so it's really unexpected. That's interesting. Let's get some more information about this. The Five of Swords. I want to get one more card. Ooh, ooh, ooh. 
I will say it's um <laughs> a very charged moment between you two, like a really emotionally charged moment. Here we go. The magician. Okay. This kind of carries the energy of you two being friends first or someone having a crush for a, a good amount of time before this actually comes to be or you're dating multiple people um, or you're both seeing multiple people like think about it like if you met online you wouldn't necessarily be exclusive from the start right like if you met them on a dating app you might still be messaging other people or going out on other dates you know before you decide to be exclusive or if you're friends first um you know, you could be dating other people, that sort of thing, because it feel it has this energy of like, I won, <laughs> like, I won. Um, so I don't know, like, it feels like your future spouse might be competing for your attention here. And when it actually comes to be that you two have that first intimate moment, it does feel like a kiss. What happens? For some of you, you might work with this person and that's why it takes a minute because with you working together, that could complicate things. Otherwise though, if that message isn't resonating, it's just telling me that this person's gonna put in a lot of effort to get to that point, like to show their affection towards you to show that you can count on them. Two of Swords. Yeah, there's a lot of angst about this. So there's some kind of like extenuating circumstance here that kind of prevents them from being really forward with you. And you may be going through that same sort of um, thought process of like, man, if I express how I'm feeling or if I make a move towards them or if I'm too flirty, then that can mess up the friendship dynamic or if the feelings aren't reciprocated, that can make work super awkward. Or if you meet them online, like what if they're still seeing other people? What if they're into other people? And so there's sort of like this back and forth energy about it. But when it happens, I do feel like they make the move and it does, again, feel like a kiss, um, but I, I don't think they just kiss you. Like, yes, the kiss is unexpected, but you, they do say something to you to tell you how they feel before the kiss. So it's not like they just kiss you. Um, I, I kind of, I want to get a little bit more information about that conversation. Like, what are they saying to you prior to this? The hanged unicorn. Okay, yeah. They are trying to tell you how their feelings have evolved. So it may, it may take a bit. This feels like a slow burn kind of romance. They're telling you how their feelings have evolved over time. They're telling you why they haven't made a move yet. But they're telling you how much you mean to them. Yeah, and so there's something in your body language that indicates to them that you feel the same way, but I don't think that you're fully expressing how you feel. I feel like there's that kiss after they express how they feel and you seem like, I think, you, I think you're in a bit of a state of shock. <laughs> like, and I don't know if that comes from them being like really attractive to you and you think that they have other offers or they're not as into you as you are into them or if it's just a case of like you being in denial maybe about it but i think you're a bit shocked they go for that kiss and then you know like that's it you know it kind of um you guys kind of remind me of jim and pam on the office like it's very clear to everyone around you and I think Jim does, like, I think it's at the casino night 
where I could be remembering this wrong. It's been a minute <laughs> since um, I rewatched that episode, but yeah, I think it's at casino night where he tells her how he feels and he's like, come on, Pam, like, cause he knows she feels the same way or there's at least some kind of feeling there. But of course, you know, Pam just can't cop to it. And then they have that passionate kiss. I think he has the conversation with her and then she's talking to her mom about it and then he comes back and kisses her and then she's still <laughs> but I think after you guys kiss I think you are gonna <laughs> I don't think you're gonna drag your feet as much as Pam did god knows um but yeah I do feel like they express feelings first yeah knight of swords they express feelings first they kiss you first and that's your first intimate like physically intimate moment with them i should clarify because right there's different types of intimacy it's a pretty passionate kiss man because there's a lot of feeling a lot of like tension that has built up over time because again it feels like that slow burn like both of you have been kind of fantasizing about this moment and now it's all happening what about your first emotionally intimate moment? Let's talk about that. Ooh. We've got the four of wands. You're talking about your hopes for the future. Your hopes for the future, what you want, what you've always wanted, I think, even since childhood, some dreams that you've had. And you're gonna find that those dreams really align with each other. Yeah, the Knight of Pentacles. It's gonna feel like a real relief to meet someone who wants the same things as you do and who sees the world the way that you do, who has the same values. Someone that you can grow with. We'll take that Nine of Pentacles, actually. Someone that you can grow with. Can we get a little bit deeper with that or no? Let's see, the Knight of Wands. There's something about this person that makes you feel so free. Yeah, there's something about them that makes you feel so free. By the way, um, I hope the light, I've switched up. I'm still figuring out how to film in this new apartment. And so I've switched up the filming space a little bit. Um, we'll see if this is better or worse than the June prediction. We'll just have to keep playing around with it or I'll have to keep playing around with it okay let's get a little bit deeper please spirit the three of cups yeah there there is a real true friendship here the, there's a real true friendship here it's not just a romantic situation like there is a solid foundation of friendship and that's where the intimacy I think is slowly built over time inside jokes you know um having that loyalty that you can have with a friend and if you think about it when you're friends with someone first we're a lot more open or at least i am personally maybe you guys don't resonate with this um but i tend to think like you can be a lot more open with your friend than you would with someone that you're dating um and going on you know like traditional sort of dates whereas with your friends you know there's a more you're not trying to just present your best self you know with your friends you should be able to be more comfortable more authentically yourself whereas you know when people go out on dates they like to present just a certain side to themselves and that's unfortunate but a lot of people do it right a lot of people do that um so i think it's just easier and it feels more comfortable with this person and you two have a lot of fun together and you can be playful and i i think this is the this person is someone that when something good happens to you you can't wait to tell them because you know they'll be genuinely happy for you and i think that's a really important part of the emotional intimacy between you two because there's no jealousy here or competitiveness um 
that really sucks when you have that in any type of relationship where someone is secretly happy when you fail or someone who smiles in your face but really they wish that they were where you're at you know or they make snide comments and kind of put you down a little bit this is someone who wants you to feel confident this is someone who wants to see you win which i think is really really nice um because sometimes you see that too in romantic partnerships where someone wants to keep their partner lower than them like they want to be the one who makes more money or they want to be the one who sometimes i think especially um not you know all men do this but i have seen this before um and maybe women do this as well but i've only seen it with men where they'll try to um kind of down their partner's physical appearance in a sneaky kind of way like make them feel insecure about like what they're wearing or how they're doing their hair or their makeup whatever so they feel physically insecure and like they can't do any better um i have seen that so i don't think you have to worry about any of that with this person is what i'm trying to say like your future spouse is really someone who is genuinely supportive of you and again wants to see you win wants to see you grow and wants to grow with you they have their own plans too they're not just trying to ride your coattails over here okay as you can see we're just kind of flowing with the messages today now someone had requested um a video on like the first time you cuddle with your future spouse so we'll just address that question really fast We've got the emperor here. I'll get, uh, let's see, two more cards. Woo, 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 sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just so cute that the 10 of wands came out in the way that he's holding all of these wands. Um, I, I definitely feel like I don't know. Um, for a lot of you, I think that you are asking about someone who presents with a more masculine energy. Um, that may not be for all of you. Maybe this is you. If you consider yourself like an emperor type of person, you can flip what I'm about to say. But whoever this is, they're like the big spoon. <laughs> and it kind of gives me an image of like a bear hug. Um, this person uh, has like a high body temperature, Aries energy. It's like a tight, warm embrace. Like this person feels very solid. Um, they're gonna hold you tightly. Oh my gosh, yeah. A lot of you, King of Pentacles now. Um, so we have Aries, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Um, you're definitely for many of you asking about a divine masculine um so maybe like your future husband but yeah big spoon energy from these characters here for sure um i feel like this is gonna happen after you've been on a really nice date with them so it wouldn't happen like after that first kiss or anything like that this is a bit later because i still feel like this person likes to take their time but once that first kiss happens and they have expressed how they felt they know that you're reciprocating that energy then it's like from that point forward it's like a traditional courtship they'll take you out on a really nice date and then after that date, and they will take you somewhere. I mean, it's the emperor and the king of pentacles. So they're spending some money. They're putting in some effort with that 10 of wands. It's going to be a really nice like wine and dine you kind of date. And again, like I said, very traditional. Um, and then I think um, as the evening sort of winds down, that's when that would happen. Um yeah they do like that though like they are definitely someone who 
likes that aspect of physical intimacy because you know some people don't like to cuddle but your future spouse is definitely someone who likes to cuddle and like i said big spoon energy <laughs> coming from this i feel so silly saying that okay let's just get some more information about uh your dynamic with this person volcano <laughs> That's like the best card you could get, right? So very passionate, very explosive. And you know, if you think about it, like volcanoes can stay dormant for so long, right? And we were talking about this being like a slow burn romance. It's like, yeah, you guys spend a bit of time being friends before this actually comes, you know, you know, I guess develops, I guess I should say, um, before it develops into a romantic situation, but when it does it's explosive and like i said that first kiss is going to be super passionate because there's a lot of pent-up feelings that have been just repressed right because of the work dynamic or because of the friendship or both you know again like jim and pam energy so when it does happen uh explosive so you guys are gonna have um a lot of physical intimacy a lot of passion but the reason why the physical intimacy is so good is because the emotional intimacy is there. So it's a very deep connection. Teacup. Oh, I love this. I think you guys are both so hopeful about this. Um, I think that you two, even if you have sort of repress those feelings for the sake of the friendship or because of the work dynamic whatever there's still a part of you that holds out hope throughout that entire like getting to know each other building that friendship i think both of you deep down always see each other as end game um and you guys there's just this feeling of like, I, I never want to do anything that would jeopardize my connection with this person. Lion. I do think pride. Pride, not wanting to get rejected, a fear of rejection, a fear that feelings aren't reciprocated, keeps, um, keeps this from developing into a romantic partnership sooner. Yeah, definitely pride, a fear of, of having, um, you know, that, that rejection happen. With house being at the bottom, though, definitely a happy home life with this person. Um, I, I do feel like you, this is kind of a side message, but I, I feel like you two share a lot of the household responsibilities. I don't feel like it falls all on one person. And with snail here, like we were saying before, um definitely a slow burn romance which honestly i kind of like that i don't know how you guys feel but it's nice to not rush it when you have that solid foundation and hey at least i'm telling you they're gonna cop to feelings first like that takes the pressure off of you. Okay, group one. Intimacy with your future spouse here. Or any additional information, I guess, here, if we want to open this up. Yeah, you guys spend a lot of time fantasizing about each other <laughs> before, um, you know, they cop to feelings for you. I also feel like if you've had certain fantasies about what it would be like to be with your future spouse, this person is sort of meeting those expectations and even exceeding them. Like I'm hearing this person is better than the person that I dreamed up. Oh my gosh, you can't make this up, right? We said this a million times, we're gonna be friends first. Aw, oh, true love. I love that. And with balance being at the bottom of the deck, this could be, you know, divine masculine, divine feminine energy, your divine counterpart. We've got true love, love all of that. 
with friendship being here i feel like this person is also a part of your soul family i don't feel like i need to explain the friendship card anymore because we've discussed it so much let's just get some more information about your future spouse's personality like i said we're just we're kind of just doing whatever we want in this reading <laughs> okay sorry i hope the noise isn't too loud okay group one your future spouse's personality group one which archetypes best fit group ones future spouse's personality oh i like networker this card always gives me gemini energy but um with a networker here this person is definitely someone who is charismatic someone who is great at um doing things to up level themselves so someone who's very charming and they use that as a way to further their ambitions get ahead in their career um you know they don't just sit around and accept their like current position like this is someone who wants to get promoted this is someone who wants to start their own business this is someone who's going to be successful because with networker they're a go-getter and a networker is someone who's going to create opportunities for themselves and maximize their current opportunities we have knight here loyalty romance chivalry i hate saying the word chivalry because i always feel like i'm saying it wrong <laughs> A love of honor i like this because i mean like we said before i do feel like once you know it has been established <laughs> that there's mutual romantic feelings from that point it's going to be like a traditional courtship and that's what the knight makes me think of so this person is going to be really romantic um you know shows up with flowers at the door buys you chocolates and things like that you know what you imagine um you know the kind of romance you see in the movies not in a toxic way but just a traditional courtship you know what we've got companion child divine this person definitely um brings out your playful side again i'm so sorry to keep bringing it up but this really feels like jim and pam on the office like they were always doing pranks together on dwight that's what the divine child is making me think of with goddess at the bottom of the deck they're definitely going to put you on a pedestal really value you they're very physically attracted to you um someone who's going to be really respectful though and with companion again there's like that friendship aspect even with virgo like they're your favorite person to do stuff with you know even if it's as mundane as going grocery shopping you know that's it like that's your person it's like they make everything a little bit better um yeah and like i was saying like jim and pam vibes like all day long um there was another message oh this also kind of reminds me of the dynamic between oh what's his name jenna and maddie on 13 going on 30 Mm-hmm. i feel like um if i had to pick a movie so for tv jim and pam movie maddie and jenna rink because they were childhood besties right but then there was always that underlying um crush that maddie had on jenna and she didn't realize it until she went through i won't ruin the plot of the movie for you if you haven't seen it but if you have seen it you know exactly what i'm talking about so slow burn romance again okay let's see why don't we let's get some details about your future spouse let's do that so these are going to be more specific so if something doesn't resonate feel free to leave it group one's future spouse please spirit This person's gonna be tall. 
And that may be tall just from your perspective. Like I'm pretty petite. Like I'm just five foot one on like a good day. So everyone's tall from my perspective. So, you know, like I said, especially with physical attributes, just take it with a grain of salt. But this person's going to be on the taller side, okay? Um, artistic and creative. They are the same age as you or close in age. They're very hardworking. I feel like we got that message already with the networker card. Love language, words of affirmation. Like I said, they're very charming, very charismatic. <laughs> yeah, they're a good leader. Definitely saw that with the emperor card as well. And then we have not your usual type. People get really triggered by this one, I have noticed. Um, and that could be referring to a lot of things. Like maybe you typically date blondes and this person is a brunette. Maybe you typically date water signs and this person ends up being a fire sign. Um, it doesn't have to be that this person is the exact opposite of everything you've ever wanted. Okay, um, so don't take that message in a super dramatic way. I don't know, I just noticed that in my comments. People will be like, I don't want someone who's not my type. I reject this reading. Okay, like it, it's not that deep. <laughs> like it doesn't have to be that serious. Um, there may just be something different about this person. Like maybe you typically date people who are older than you or younger than you and this person's your same age. And so in that way, they're not your typical type. Um, so, you know, always take what resonates. Okay. Let's get a love token message. So which love token does your future spouse want to share with you right now? This is their higher self. <laughs> Good for a date night. I told you. Let's get one more. Good for a long massage. Um, this person really is about like a traditional courtship. Um, oh, I feel like this is moved. I'm sorry. Have you moved? Okay, that's better. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, now let's get some Spark Romance Matchsticks. Group one. I think we just get three. And I'm feeling this one. Okay. <laughs> I love that you got this one. It says, stay in bed together all day and binge watch your favorite show. If your favorite show is The Office, stop it. <laughs> that would make me so happy. Um, we have watched the sunrise and sunset on the same day. I've done that before at the beach and it's so cool. Okay. And that could be alluding to the fact that we were picking up in the very beginning that this person's going to plan a lot of trips for you guys as a surprise. And so maybe you do that somewhere where there's really beautiful scenery like the beach. And then we have lie outside on a blanket at night and watch the stars. Oh, I love doing that. Um, and that's again, like maybe they plan a trip for you. So maybe you live in the city where you can't really see the stars and they plan a trip to the mountains where you have a very clear view of the stars. And so um, again, I, I really feel like they're gonna plan a lot of nice surprise trips for you, but then you have to stay in bed together all day. And so that balances out with that like, cozy homebody energy so it's like you get the adventure but you also get the coziness too i really like that for you guys okay so this is going to be your final message from your future spouse's higher self it says sacred union really divine counterpart energy like we were picking up before it says honor and treasure your relationship for it is truly sacred I mean, you get you got the divine child as well. So there's definitely a spiritual connection between you two. Um, you could be having dreams about this person as well, or it's going to feel like this person is my soulmate. Um, this is a love of a lifetime kind of energy. But I think ultimately, you two just really value each other. And I mean, when you appreciate what the other person brings to the table and you build together, and you grow together. I mean, that's the the best chance that you have at having a successful lasting marriage, right? Where there's mutual love and support and respect, like that's what you want. So I really love to see this message for you all. 
Okay, so group one, this was your reading. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that, I don't know, you liked this style of reading. And again, thank you to the subscriber who suggested this topic, and I will see you guys in my next one. Welcome to your reading. So I'd like to say a huge thank you to the subscriber who suggested this topic. So we're going to start off with your Astro Dice today. I have this um, pillowcase here just to soften the noise. So we're going to kind of get additional messages. Um, group one, I kind of just went with the flow of the reading. So that's the plan uh, for you all today as well. Okay, group two, intimacy with your future spouse. What do we need to know? Okay, we've got the 10th house and Pisces. What an interesting combination. Um, group one had a funny combo too. I really, really love this. Because um, with Pisces here, there's definitely a dreamy aspect to this. Um, I feel like if you've had any sort of fantasies about what the intimate moments between your future spouse and you would be, whether it's emotional intimacy or physical intimacy, or with Pisces energy, energy a spiritual connection as well like you've always wanted to be with your soulmate or i don't know a lot about twin flames but maybe you've always wanted that kind of dynamic but whatever your fantasy has been that's what you're getting <laughs> with pisces being here um so if you know like in your head like oh this is my ultimate sort of fantasy here like this is how i would like the intimacy to develop or I know that I need someone who, even like certain love languages, like I need words of affirmation or I need acts of service, something like that. That's how I like love to be expressed to me. This is how I like to express love, that sort of thing. This person is meeting those expectations. Like, I, I don't know, they're, they're showing me like a checklist and it's like check, 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 check. <laughs> like you know, that they're meeting all of those points. And then with the 10th house, um, this person also, um, your future spouse, they're really into gift giving. Um, and they like to, you know how people make um, big romantic gestures? That's what this person is into. Um, and maybe you like the little things. So they're gonna do that too. So like you're still getting like, what you want but it's like additionally this person likes the big romantic gestures with the 10th house like they want to make a splash because the 10th house can talk about status and so this is the type of person um like when they surprise you with something it's something big or if they buy you something it's something big like they like to make a statement or even when this person proposes to you it's gonna be a big kind of spectacle um it's going to be something that again is quite flashy um i don't know like that i'm just picking that up really strongly and there's something about that that kind of sweeps you off your feet because you're like man 
they put in so much effort. Like they're so detail oriented when it comes to making you happy. And I think that's why I was being shown a checklist. It's like tick, 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 tick. Like they are hitting all of those boxes because <laughs> that's a weird expression to use. Um, but they are like, they're meeting your standards because they have that attention to detail and you are a priority for them at the end of the day. Like you are their priority. Okay, so we are going to take a look now at your first intimate moment with this person. I'm filming in a different spot today, and I don't think I'm as happy with the lighting. So I'm going to be playing around with this probably for a minute in my new apartment until I figure this out. So I apologize if the lighting is, I don't know, it looks kind of bright like it's washing stuff out. Group two, please spirit. And a big thank you to my guides and your guides for coordinating these messages. Your first intimate moment with this person. Wow. Oh, this is really sweet. Okay, so your first intimate moment with this person actually isn't anything physical. Um, sorry, I had to move a little bit. Um, you're sharing something with them that is a really deep wound for you. Now, you could be sharing like your whole story with them, or it could just be a piece of your story something that has happened to you in your past that cut you really deep, that hurt you in some way to the point to where it hurt like your confidence, it hurt your sense of safety maybe, it hurt your ability to trust, even like yourself and your own intuition. Maybe you blamed yourself at some point for this thing, but you are opening up to them and it may be over like a shared meal, you know, like you go out to dinner with them or you're having lunch with them or coffee with them and you guys get to talking and you are not planning on sharing <laughs> like whatsoever. This is something that is really close to your heart. It's a deep wound and it may be something that you haven't shared with anyone in a really long time, if ever. And it may even be something that you struggle with admitting to yourself. And I think it surprises you that you do open up to this person and there's something about them that just makes you feel so safe. Again, like I don't think you're planning on sharing this with them when you do, but it's like your first intimate moment is when you share this, um, this deep wound. And it's gonna be different for all of you. But with the Ten of Swords next to the Eight of Swords, it's something that really hurt you badly. Really hurt you badly. And again, to the point to where you may have blamed yourself for it or you didn't trust yourself afterwards. So let's say, for example, someone betrayed your trust. You may have blamed yourself even though you were the victim in that. You may have blamed yourself like, why didn't I see the red flags or why did why did I trust that person? And, you know, just kind of internalize that blame. Um, but yeah, you, you share it with, with your future spouse and they really support you. They make you feel so safe. We've got the five of pentacles and the six of pentacles. That's so beautiful. This was something that made you feel unsafe like this is something that made you question other people and their motives and their intentions or something that really threatened like your sense of safety and security whether that was physically or emotionally it was very um it was very traumatizing for you and their kind of response to this like they hold space they listen to you and they give you what you need in that moment and they they like bear witness to your pain and they give you that support that you need 
and I think you feel quite emotional about it because again, like you weren't expecting to share this. And typically if we feel like we have overshared or if we feel like we said something and we wish that we hadn't shared that because it's so deep or it's a really sensitive subject for us and we worry, is this person going to respect us enough to keep our secret? Is this person going to use this against me in the future to manipulate me? You know, like being able to be emotionally vulnerable with someone is something, it's really scary, right? And so um, this person's going to give you what you need in that moment so you don't have that regret. You know, like if you, let's say you went out to coffee with them and that's when you shared this, you're not going to be kicking yourself on the drive home, <laughs> wishing you hadn't said it because they're going to give you what you need in that moment to give you that reassurance that it's okay and you are safe to be emotionally vulnerable with me. And I think that's something that's really, really new for you. And your bottom of the deck is 10 of cups. I mean, it doesn't get <laughs> any more emotionally supportive than that. And I like to see the repeating 10 for you as well. And even with Pisces, like Pisces is the final sign in the zodiac. And so it has a little piece of every zodiac sign. And so this is really going to be a connection that is fulfilling to your soul. Okay. I don't think that you have ever felt so emotionally supported ever. Um, when are you, let, let's get into the physical intimacy. Let's get into that. Um, I am noticing <laughs> the, the vodka here and the oysters. Um, I wonder if you've been drinking for some of you and that's why you have these like loose lips and you share this like deep thing. Um, and maybe you don't even typically like drink around other people because you like to be in control or you don't typically allow yourself to get so tipsy with someone that you don't know super well because it does feel like you don't know them that well when you share this and that's part of why it's such a big deal. Let's get into physical intimacy now. Six of Wands. I, <laughs> to get the Six of Wands to start out, um, this is going to be a situation, a relationship where things are good from the start. It's not like it's an awkward first kiss or... And they tried to hold my hand or put their arm around me and in doing so they knocked over a glass and it was kind of awkward. You know what I mean? Like, um, yeah, it, it doesn't feel like that. Or, you know, um, on the TV show Friends, when Ross and Rachel were trying to, I, I think it was like after their first date or something like that and he tries to like kiss her or grab her butt or something and she can't stop laughing. And then I think later on in the series when she's trying to get together with Joey, it's so awkward that they can't, they're trying to like power through it, but it's just like mistake after mistake. Like I think she like hits him in the groin unintentionally <laughs> or um, yeah, it's just super awkward. And they're like, man, we just can't do this. It's, it's just too awkward. Um, it's not like that. It's I'm hearing you guys hit a home run even in the beginning. There's no like learning curve to each other's um, body languages. Like you guys are already speaking the same language. You're already able to interpret like their sort of, um, I guess like nonverbal body cues. And yeah, it's not awkward. It's not awkward. Yeah, because they already sense um, what you need and you're able to do the same. I mean, justice is always blind, right? It's like 
we don't have to say anything. I already know or I can already sense like what you're wanting from me, what you need from me, what you're into. Um, and that's kind of a rare thing. Like usually you kind of have to have an open conversation about it, but not for you guys. <laughs> I don't know. Um, it could be that you guys are just really aligned in that way. Like what you typically like is what they typically like. Um, Cause you know, everyone has like different, I don't know how to say this in a PG way, like different uh, preferences, different preferences, but you two share the same preferences. And so I think that makes things super easy. Nine of cups, I mean, this is again, like your ultimate fantasy. And listen, I didn't say that in group one, so I'm not just saying that in every single group, okay? Um, and with the king of pentacles, it's just a really like earthy, sensual kind of energy and i do feel like if you're asking about a masculine presenting person they're definitely going to take the lead okay now if you yourself are the masculine like you're watching this and you're like i really identify with the masculine energy then you're taking the lead okay in terms of like initiating the physical intimacy so whoever is the masculine presenting person they're going to be the one who you know, makes the first move. Okay, let's just get into maybe just some more details in general about your dynamic with this person. Let's do that. Aww, 10 of cups all day long. And the moon, Pisces, 10 Pisces. We have the like literally repeating messages from your Astro Dice are now here. Um, I really like that. So Ten of Cups, again, like ultimate fantasy all day long, meeting all of your needs. Check, 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 check. Um, I do feel like there is an element here where you both like to keep the other person guessing a little bit. And, you know, I think it's kind of cute, like, yeah, you have that moment where you share something really deep and personal that you weren't expecting. And I feel like part of your response to that is like, okay, I shared something like really deep and really personal. Now I'm going to pull back a little bit with my energy and let them meet me sort of in that space. And so I think that they're going to do that with the Ten of Cups being here. So you share something really deep and personal with them and they do a really great job again of like holding space and giving you that reassurance that it was safe for you to express that but afterwards you know maybe on your next date or the next time you see each other they open up to you about something personal to them and even if it's not the same level of intensity it's like okay, now they're meeting me where I'm at. So it doesn't feel unbalanced. And so now it feels like we're both being emotionally vulnerable. And I now have an opportunity to support them the same way they supported me. And so it doesn't feel like you're revealing everything about yourself and they're not doing the same. You know, it's like, okay, I gave you a piece of me. Now you give me a piece of you. And so both of you are sort of adding these like puzzle pieces and then you guys meet in the middle and this is like the ultimate vision with the 10 of cups. And so that's sort of how the relationship develops over time, like piece by piece. You give a little, I give a little. And it says, you know, back and forth, ebb and flow. Two of swords. You guys both give each other so much reassurance. And it's like, I, I think for, for you, especially group two, trust doesn't come easily. And to be able to trust this person is going to be sort of the bedrock for every form of intimacy, whether it's emotional or physical or, or spiritual. Being able to trust this person is a game changer. Like, I don't think for some of you, 
you've been able to do that with a partner in a really long time, if ever. And that may be because of like childhood wounds or past experiences with love, or maybe that's just your personality. Maybe you're a Scorpio, I don't know. <laughs> um, they tend to be pretty deeply private, but yeah, I, I feel like the, the mutual trust is everything in this relationship. Yeah, I mean, there's no fear that they're gonna stab you in the back. And I don't think some of you have ever had that. And there is a deep sense of um, protectiveness of each other and this feeling of like, you know, I won't let anyone ever harm you. I'm always gonna have your back. Whoops. I tell you, I'm just letting cards fly. <laughs> Oh, I gotta find a better filming setup. This is not working for me. Okay. Oh, wolf. I love this message because it's like two lone wolves coming together to form their own little pack. And then if you have children, you have a little wolf pack. That's so cute. Um, or if you have fur babies. <laughs> but anyway, I love that. Yeah, it's like two lone wolves. And the moon like wolves howling at the moon, like coming together. Yeah, and trusting each other and having that loyalty. Let's get one more card, glove. You're really delicate with each other. Yeah, it's such a cute dynamic. It's like I would cut <laughs> I would I would cut anybody not not literally but like I would do whatever I had to do to protect you to keep you safe but then like with each other it's like you're so gentle I feel like both of you have this like hard outer shell but with each other it's like ooey gooey so like you know you find out you're both big softies you know, and you're only that way with each other. I'm sorry, that was probably loud. Okay, anything about your relationship in general? Okay, I said this, I think, in the beginning, gifts. Yeah, they definitely like to, and that could be for both of you, um, but they like to make a splash with the gifts. Aw, group one got the same card, true love. I love to see that. I mean, not every marriage is happy, so to see true love, that's really reassuring. Oh yeah, you give each other hope. It really feels like, I mean, not to be dramatic, but I mean, your bottom of the deck is fear. Um, I'm a Leo, so I'm going to be a little bit dramatic. Uh, <laughs> it feels like both of you kind of, or through this relationship, through this marriage, you kind of restore each other's fate faith, I'm sorry, faith, in humanity. Like, I now believe again that there are good people out there who aren't going to screw me over, who, you know, people that I can actually trust because my future spouse is one of those people. And it could be as well, like through your future spouse, you end up meeting more soul family members because your heart is more open. You may also get messages um, about this person through music. You know, we haven't gotten any messages about how you're gonna meet this person. Let's just see, there's like a little extra message. Eight of Swords, when you're least expecting it. For some of you, when you're coming out of a breakup or you're coming out of some sort of situation where you were lied to, betrayed, could be coming in at a moment when you have given up on love, when you feel indecisive, or when you're focused on everything but love. So they're giving me more about your mindset. Can we get anything more about the how or no spirit? Wow, what a story this is telling. 
Okay, so we got Death card, Six of Swords, Eight of Cups, Ace of Pentacles. <laughs> Bottom of the deck is that Five of Pentacles coming back around again. Um, yeah, okay. They're not telling me how, I'll be honest, um, but they are telling me that you're going to meet them after a time when you've had a big ending in your life, but it's an ending that you started. You are walking away from something, getting yourself out of a toxic situation, whether it's a bad relationship, um, a bad workplace environment, whatever, a bad living situation, all of the above, you know, um, this person is going to come in as things start to get better for you and as you kind of accept that you need a new start and you make the changes to kind of clear that space to have that new start and for some of you with the ace of pentacles being here um and the five of pentacles being your bottom of the deck this person could come in as like you're starting a new job or your finances are improving your living situation improves um something in your physical environment improves um and they're gonna come into your life after a period of deep healing and you're going to share with them whatever this seven of swords moment was for you that's what you're gonna be um emotionally vulnerable about and you're gonna have you know that first intimate moment is going to be that emotional vulnerability okay let's get some information now about your future spouse's personality group two, which archetypes best illustrate your future spouse's personality? Group two. I'm going to have to sit up again. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. I feel like your future spouse must have a good sense of humor. Um, and you know what? I'm, I'm like this myself, but if I'm, if I'm talking about like the darkest point in my life, I will still make a joke about it. Like I will still find a way to laugh about it. No matter how terrible things are, I'll still make a joke about it. Um, it's just, I don't know. It's, I have a Gemini moon. I can't help it. And there's something there about your future spouse being able to make you laugh no matter how messed up things are <laughs> like i feel like you two must share a similar sense of humor or your future spouse is just really funny um but also here with exorcist it's like all of that bad stuff that was kind of like haunting you from your past there's something about your future spouse's energy where they just clear that for you they just clear it I think there's something so healing about this um, relationship. Your future spouse may be someone who is just really emotionally intelligent or, you know, like you talk to them and you're like, they would make a great therapist. Um, not to say that they will be your therapist, okay? <laughs> um, we have knight and king and I really like this. Um, this person is going to be super protective over you but they really show up for you in a way where yes they're protective over over you but it doesn't feel like they're trying to control you it feels more of like i just really love you and care about you and i feel like that that's kind of a mutual feeling like you're protective of each other and you look at each other as equals, as partners. Yeah, because now we have queen here and we also have servant. Like you two use each other's strengths to serve the relationship, to improve the relationship. Um, yeah. There's like so much mutual love and respect here um and i feel like i'm just hearing both of you know how to stay in your own lane like you have what you're good at doing i have what i'm good at doing and we respect each other for it 
and I'm not stepping on your toes and you're not stepping on mine because um, both of you are very capable people, but you have different strengths, you know, because you're different individuals, but you respect each other and no one's looking at the other person like, oh, I'm the boss. It's like, no, we share responsibility for this life that we're creating together. Okay, now we're going to use our little grab bag to get some messages about your future spouse. Um, take these with a grain of salt because they are more specific. So if something isn't resonating, feel free to leave it. Group two. Oh, Gracie's in our little cat cafe. If I can take, I wasn't paying attention. I'm gonna redo this. Gracie was distracting me. Group two. If I can, I'll take a picture of her. Okay, group two. <laughs> they want to take care of you. I feel like both of you are like this though. Like I said, both of you have this sense of like feeling protective of each other, wanting to keep each other safe, but respecting again, like your lane versus my lane. <laughs> they have great eyebrows. <laughs> Some of these are funny. Love language, acts of service. I can definitely see that with like wanting to take care of each other. Okay, they're hardworking. Not surprised to see that with the king energy and the queen energy. They could have brown eyes. Sorry, that's kind of... And they love the outdoors. So this person can really feel most at home in nature. Um, they could also, I feel like for some of you, and this is a more specific message, but I feel like for some of you, I'm just seeing someone walking a larger dog, like going on hikes and stuff, um, or they have a dog. I don't know a lot about the different you know, breeds of dogs, but <laughs> they may have a dog that you can take hiking. Um, like, I don't think you would take a chihuahua on a hike, but you know, they have like a sturdy enough kind of breed of dog where they can handle longer distances like that. Um, I don't know, I just see someone walking a larger dog on like a hike. So anyway, that's a more specific message, obviously. All right, let's get some love tokens and some spark romance matchsticks. And let's get a message from your future spouse's higher self. group two sorry if you hear that noise outside i was told that the, the like the train or whatever it's called that's running outside doesn't run like that all year so <laughs> i'm hoping we don't have to deal with that for the whole year okay Group two. <laughs> we have good for a very long cuddle. Oh, that reminds me. Um, I was supposed to, hold on, we'll come back to that. Let's get your matchsticks. Okay. It says try exercising together. So yeah, maybe you two really will go like on hikes together outside. We have trade embarrassing stories from when you were younger. I feel like we, we touched on that a little bit when we were talking about being emotionally vulnerable and open with each other. And we have holding hands, that's really sweet, okay. Let's see, I, what I forgot to do, a subscriber have requested that I talk about like the first time that you like cuddle with your future spouse. So let's just see if we can get some messages about that. Got the page of pentacles. With the page of pentacles, it will actually be kind of early on. Um, 
in the connection. It won't take long for that to happen. High Priestess. We got the lovers and this one's a little bit graphic so I'm gonna get a little keep YouTube happy. Okay. Um, <laughs> It's, it's not going to be that long into the relationship. Um, I'm seeing someone like, because I feel like you guys have a lot of deep talks, a lot of late night conversations, conversations that go on for hours with each other. And that could be a totally new thing, something you're not used to doing. And it's like, you just somehow get closer and closer on the couch together you know what i mean like that kind of thing um or like they're dropping you off home but then you get to talking to them and you end up sitting in their car for like hours listening to music and then somehow their arm is around you or you're holding hands you know it's like the, that physical touch kind of just happens it's like you kind of just melt into it as you guys keep talking like there's so much here about having long deep conversations and not that it's all serious because i do feel like again like your future spouse is really funny so i feel like even if you're having like this really deep long drawn out conversation with them it's still fun they still they still are able to find those moments of humor with you and so yeah, I, I don't know. I can't, I can't stop smiling. Um, I think that's your favorite thing with this person though, is like how well you two communicate with each other and how much you're able to trust them. Cause I feel like trust is everything to you, man. Like, I feel like that's something that you have wanted, you have craved. And I think for a lot of you, you haven't really had it. You haven't really had it. Okay. So I'm not really getting any like other messages in terms of like the cuddling i do feel like it's just easy with you two though like it just feels very natural it doesn't feel like i don't know it doesn't feel forced because i feel like it just kind of happens organically i guess like as you guys are talking it's like again you're just moving closer and closer like magnets okay all right so this is a message from your future spouse's higher self what they want you to know at this time. It says, life is a series of constantly shifting cycles. When we resist change, we resist the natural flow of life and create unnecessary stress. Go with the flow, you will be surprised where it leads. So if you have control issues, <laughs> um, do your best to say, I love and let go. My life is in perfect flow. Surrender to the divine. And we did get a lot of messages about, um, you know, this is going to happen. Like you're going to meet this person at a time when you're thinking about everything else, but love when you're not expecting it, when you've stopped looking for it. So I feel like that goes really well <laughs> with this message here. Um, but yeah, so group two, this was your reading. I hope that you enjoyed it and I will see you in my next one.
into your reading, I would like to say a huge thank you to the subscriber who suggested this topic, but let's get into it. Intimacy with your future spouse. We're going to start off with your astro dice and we'll get additional messages too. Group three, intimacy with your future spouse. Okay, I'm going to do that over again because I <laughs> wasn't happy with how that went down. Okay, so we've got Gemini and the third house. So we have Gemini twice now. Communication, <laughs> communication, 100%. Um, intimacy with you guys is going to start with talking. Um, you're going to really connect with each other through conversation. Um, however, like group two had this like recurring sort of theme throughout their reading where they were having these like deep, long, like emotionally intense conversations. But with you all, it feels a lot more lighthearted. It feels more like witty banter between you guys, having a shared sense of humor, um, teasing each other, being playful with each other. It feels like there's a lot of flirting happening back and forth. Um, and this may even be a little bit of like, we like to like fuss with each other. We like to tease each other. We like to give each other a hard time. Um, but it's all like in a very joking, playful kind of way. Um, yeah, I feel like you guys have a lot of fun together and this person definitely makes you feel like a kid again. Um, they kind of bring out that side to you because um, it definitely doesn't have the seriousness or that heavy, kind of like heavy energy that group two had. Um, with you guys, it feels a lot more playful. And I feel like you are really drawn to this person's intelligence and you think they're really clever and they think the same thing about you. So I feel like intellectually, you guys really stimulate each other in that way. Um, you know, like this person is just as smart as you are. And I feel like you guys both, and even if you're not intelligent in the same exact way, like there's different, um, different forms and kinds of intelligence, right? But I feel like you guys both um, are kind of on the same level and you guys both sort of enjoy that so conversations with this person aren't just gonna be like petty gossip you know or like really superficial kind of things um even though you guys are keeping things light and fun and playful you guys are still talking about um things that intellectually stimulate you <laughs> um seems like weird to say that but you guys are really compatible in that way. Like, it's a meeting of the minds. I keep hearing that. Um, so yeah, let's look into the first time or the first moment of intimacy between you two. So it, it doesn't necessarily have to be physical. Um, group one was like the first kiss. Group two was a moment of like deep emotional intimacy. So let's see what yours is. If you're group three, you always get the scoop on the other groups. <laughs> let's see. First moment here of intimacy. Also, I'm not really happy with this setup. I've actually changed it a little bit from group one and two. I'm going to have to play around with it um, and kind of figure it out because I'm in my new apartment now. So I don't know, just bear with me if the sound isn't right or the lighting isn't right or the background sucks. <laughs> just give me some grace um, for the next couple videos until I, you know, get the kinks worked out. Okay. Group three. Like even the way I'm sitting, I'm like, not sustainable. <laughs> not comfortable. Okay. Ooh. Oh, of course we have the Queen of Swords. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Um, this, this is probably your energy, quite frankly, but like you need this. You need someone who is on par with you. Like, I think you may be like a little bit sassy or again, like you're just really clever. You're really witty. 
um, you have like a sharp tongue or you know you have a sense of humor that might be a little bit sarcastic or maybe you have like a dry you know kind of like British sense of humor um, and not everyone gets that <laughs> you know um, some of you might have like April Ludgate vibes but yeah um, this person catches your drift they catch your drift okay you guys are on the same wavelength let's see we got the four of swords here We've got the ten of swords we get maybe two more cards We've got the Knight of Swords and the King of Pentacles. Okay. This first moment of intimacy for you guys, um, this kind of feels like the enemies to lovers trope, but not where you're like really enemies, but more of like, again, like you like to fuss with each other. You like to give each other a hard time. It feels playful. There's like a banter back and forth, but this kind of like an odd kind of way that this comes about but it's like you guys are having this like silly argument and then really physically charged <laughs> you know like you're up in each other's faces a bit and then I mean you see the way this knight of swords is holding this sword here it's like just piercing you through the heart here <laughs> and like sweeping you off your feet with the four of swords um but it's like you're kind of doing the same thing to them. It's like, it's almost like, I don't know if you guys aren't recognizing or seeing how well you two fit together or you're not realizing or wanting to recognize how compatible you two are. It's like you're the last to know kind of thing. Um, it's kind of like everyone else in the room is like, oh, get a room already. Like, you guys argue like an old married couple, like, get a room already. It's like, go make out somewhere. Like, you know, like, stop this. Stop all of this back and forth banter. Like, everybody can see that you two want each other. And so it's like you're having this, like, silly argument. Like, you're going back and forth and then... There's just like this moment where you two kiss. Like, there it is. Like, there's no, like, with, with group one, there was like a confession of feelings. But for you all, it's like, we're having this like silly fight and then someone's kissing somebody. Um, I actually wanna know who, who kisses who. I got the magician and the empress. So whoever, of course, the divine masculine, <laughs> the divine masculine um, kisses first, but I'll tell you what, whoever the feminine is, she, it's like she, it's like she goes in 90%, but she makes him come in 10%. You see what I'm saying? Like, she's the one who closes most of the physical distance here. Like, she's the one who gets up in his face, <laughs> if that makes sense. But whoever is the masculine, she makes him come that final 10% so she can say, you kiss me. But really, I mean, she was the one who, like, closed all that physical distance to start with. You know what I mean? Like... That's not a sin, there's like a little bit of pettiness between you two. Um, because, especially with this Queen of Swords, like, again, whoever that feminine is, and it may be you, but there's just like this feeling of like, well, you kiss me. But she knows that she was like, that A, she wanted it, and B, that she is the one who got up in like his personal space, the masculine's personal space to begin with. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I don't know 
it's almost like um, both of you kind of sense how each other feels, but it's like my pride is in the way, so I don't want to be the one who gives in first. I don't want to be the one who makes a move first. That's what it feels like. Um, you two are really funny and interesting, <laughs> like as a couple. Um, let's get more into your relationship and your dynamic and let's just see okay we have the star i do feel like both of you um are pretty confident people like you both you both can be like a little bit intimidating Maybe it's because of how smart you are, um, or like how sharp of a tongue you have. Six of Cups. Yeah, it's like you met your match, Group 3. You met your match. Like, your guides are like high-fiving each other, like, we finally did it. Like, <laughs> we finally got these two together. Um, cause both of you feel like quite frankly, stubborn people, um, people who don't like to cop to feelings, people who, you know, are kind of like, oh, I'm independent. I don't need anybody. got the devil card here there's a lot of physical attraction between you two you guys probably have the spiciest dynamic um because it feels like two firecrackers coming together um and i feel like you guys like how i don't know how much i can say on youtube um okay the preamble to the physical intimacy for you all and I know I'm using an odd word, but it's because I don't know how much I can say on YouTube. The preamble <laughs> to the physical intimacy for you guys is that verbal banter back and forth. And that's what does it for both of you. Like, again, like you're really into that. Two of Wands. There's an energy here where both of you kind of like that the other person puts, puts you in your place. Um, yeah, like... You know, it's kind of like Sour Patch Kids, like first they're sour, then they're sweet. Like that's how you two are with each other. Um, yeah, I, I think you like being told about yourself a bit. And it's because you're both really confident people, you know, like both of you have these like strong personalities. And I don't think a lot of people put you in your place very often, <laughs> you know, and I think you like that. Um, I think you like that dynamic. Yeah, Eight of Swords and Four of Swords. But I think that when you do have those softer moments with each other, I think it's so special because you don't have that very frequently with anybody. And so when you do let those walls come down, it means something. You know, some people will tell their whole life story to anybody, you know, some random person on the elevator and they'll just start spewing everything that's ever happened to them, you know, or whatever happened to them in the fourth grade, you know, like some people are an open book and they wear their heart on their sleeves and they just tell everything. You're not like that group three. And if you are like that, I don't think this is your group. Okay. Pick again, <laughs> you know, or maybe this isn't your reading, but with you all, it's like a privilege to get to know what you're like beyond that, um, you know, like sarcastic kind of exterior, that, you know, kind of wall that you have up with that Queen of Swords energy. You know, the Queen of Swords isn't the Queen of Cups, you know, like she's not, she's just not a soft hearted kind of individual, you know, like she's pretty guarded. She's hard to get to know. She has her boundaries, you better respect them. You don't wanna cross Queen of Swords, you know? Like she is a force to be reckoned with and you can love her or hate her, she could care less. She is who she is and you can take it or leave it. Queen of Swords, she's a cool chick. 
Um, and the Queen of Cups, all the queens have their strengths, right? 100%. But I'm just saying, definitely a different energy than someone who would be soft-hearted like the Queen of Cups. So for you all, it's a privilege to get to know you because you don't just share that with everybody. And so it makes your future spouse feel special. And I feel like you give that to each other because you're both, you both resonate with that energy. Both of you understand the importance of being careful about who you share what with and understanding that like having my priv like having my trust is a privilege not a right and both of you you know like have that same value so it's like you get each other in that way and so you both feel like it's an honor when the other person opens up because you understand that not everybody gets to see that softer side and so it, it makes you feel good that they save that for you and, you know, and vice versa. Okay, a subscriber had asked um, about the first time you cuddle with your future spouse. So we're going to answer that question really fast. Just thought I would rope it in with this reading. We have the Five of Swords. What is with you guys? <laughs> like y'all are so funny um yeah you guys uh cuddle after a fight now it's not necessarily a fight that you have with each other um i'm not sensing that you've had some kind of or maybe they have i, I am picking up more your energy here but you have had some kind of argument or disagreement or disappointment with somebody and it kind of uh it's like, it's like you won the argument, but you don't feel good about it. So this must be with someone that you care about. Um, and you, and you feel bad that you had to go there with that person. You feel bad. Maybe that you lost your temper or you feel bad that you had to speak the truth just because you know, the truth was hard for them to handle. Um, or you had to assert a boundary and you just like, you know you did the right thing, but it just feels bad all the same. Like, you didn't want to have a conflict with that person. It does feel like more like your energy. And your future spouse is comforting you after this. They're comforting you. And so, you know, they're going to tell you, listen, like, you did the best for yourself. And, you know, if you hadn't, sp if you hadn't spoken up and said your, your piece about it, you would have regretted it. And then you would have felt, you know, that anger towards yourself that you didn't speak up in the moment. So you did the right thing. I feel like maybe some people have a perception that you're like a cold fish, <laughs> you know, like you're, you're, you know, some people may look at you and feel like you're, especially if you're a woman that maybe you're like heartless or you're really cold or, you know, you don't really have this like warm and fuzzy <laughs> kind of uh, energy where people think that you're like all oh. because there's a side to you like people know you're not a doormat people know that they can't get away with certain things with you and so you know people who would like to do that um people who would like to take advantage of you would then maybe label you as someone who's really cold when really you just have self-respect you know um and so i feel like your future spouse would like remind you of that like you did the right thing, you know, like you have a right to stand up for yourself, to advocate for yourself, and it's all right. Like they can respect your boundaries or not, but like no matter how much you care for that person, you still have to honor how you feel. And you can't be in, the, you know, a connection with someone or you can't have someone in your life, you know, as a friend, whatever, or as a colleague or, you know, even a family member who's going to be hurting you and then you not feel free enough to be able to stand up for yourself, you know? Yeah, so <laughs> I, f I feel like that would be the first time that you have that kind of, that kind of physical intimacy. Like they're trying to comfort you, they're trying to hold you and reassure you, you know, that you were in the right and you know, it was a hard conversation to have, but it needed to be said. And 
I think honestly that's going to be a real pivotal moment for you um, in your dynamic with your future spouse because you're going to kind of see like how this person's perspective, how their values, and even like I'm hearing like their disposition, like their temperament and the way that they express things um, really works for you and you kind of see like a path forward like oh like wow like I could really like build with this person like their energy works really well with mine and you're gonna see a stark contrast I think between past partners and past connections that you've had even with friends and you're like wow like this is this is a big difference you know between like my past relationships and stuff but this is this is like surprisingly like a, a dynamic that works well you know like I, I feel like again like everyone else kind of sees how compatible you two are but it takes you guys i think because of your pride <laughs> or your egos here um it takes you guys a bit to recognize it for what it is okay Let's see any more messages here about intimacy or your connection with them in general. We've got eel. It's electric. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely an intensity here. <laughs> I do feel like um, creature's paw. <laughs> Okay, uh, yeah, you guys are um, pretty physically adventurous with each other. Um, and I feel like the parts of yourself that you feel are hardest to love, and we all have those kind of aspects. Like for myself, like I know I can be a bit bossy. Like I know that. You know, like I'm aware of that about myself. Um, you know, like we all have certain aspects of ourselves that can be hard to love. And for you all, it's like those parts of yourself are what turns this person on. And that I think throws you for a loop. Like that's going to feel so bizarre to you, but it is, you know, like maybe for some of you, like, you know you have a sharp tongue and you're like, you know, I can be a bit harsh with my words and this person's going to be like, yeah, that really turns me on. <laughs> so, we have Toad. Yeah, this definitely, um, this definitely evolves. It doesn't feel like friends to lovers like group one did because you guys have too much spice for that to be quite honest with you. Um, but it definitely does evolve, you know, like it, it does take a second for you guys to like come to terms with this. And I think because it's so intense and some of you may, it kind of depends upon your personality, but some of you guys may write that off like, oh, it's just a physical attraction kind of thing that's it. Some of you, you know, may think that like this is too intense so I'm gonna withdraw from this. Like I feel like this person could break my heart and I'm not, yeah, I just can't. I just can't, you know, and you don't want to open yourself up to that, you know, that risk because it does. It, it feels like a very passionate, spicy kind of dynamic here. Um, also, with Creature's Paw, maybe you really like their hands or they really like yours. Um, I also feel like you guys, like there's something about movement here. Um, like I like the way you walk, like I like the way you carry yourself. I like the way that you, like I like how your presence kind of commands attention. You know, like I, again, like I feel like you guys both have like these strong personalities, like you both are a force. And that doesn't mean that you're the loudest in the room. Sometimes the quietest person can have still the strongest personality because people notice that. People notice that like, hey, like, why don't you talk that much? But when you say something, because you don't talk that frequently, people take notice. So that's not me saying you're like super extroverted. It just means that 
there's something quite unique about you, and I think it's the same for them. Okay, let's see. How do they see you? Aw, we got the fool. <laughs> this is kind of a cute message. Um, they see you as someone who can make a fool out of them. Like, they see you as someone that they could fall head over heels with. And I think it's scary for them too. Um, yeah, it's like I could blindly fall in love with this person. It's, for them, it's really about your personality as well. Like, it's not just physical attractiveness here. Five of Wands. They definitely, like, this person would fight for you. Like, I, I, I do feel like even if they're not wanting to say how they feel, even if they're trying to mask it in some way in the beginning, they still would not want anyone else trying to give you any kind of attention. Like, I feel like that might actually be how they end up telling you how they feel about you is if they cut, if they hear through like the grapevine or from you that you're going on a date with someone else or you're talking to someone else or you're seeing someone else, it, it would spark some jealousy <laughs> for, for, you know, from them. Um, I'm not saying they're going to be possessive, but they're going to come at it like, okay, if I don't say something, if I don't make some sort of move here, uh, someone else is going to take them, you know, like I, I'm going to have to step up. I'm going to have to make some kind of offer. And that may be what that like initial kind of little fight that you guys have is about is because you're like, why are you being jealous? You're not my boyfriend or you're not my girlfriend. Like, why are you acting this way? And then, you know, they end up kissing you. Okay. But you know why. Again, like if you're that feminine <laughs> who's like getting in their personal space, like you know how they feel. Anything about like your marriage or the romance in this dynamic? Oh yeah. It's so like to get these two cards to come out together, caution and security, like both of you are quite hesitant about this. And I think it's because of the intensity of it freaks both of you out. You know, both of you are definitely people who process their emotions through their mind. So you tend to rationalize your feelings or try to apply logic to your feelings. And when you do that, coming from a Gemini moon, when you do that, you have a tendency to overthink and to get anxious and to second guess yourself. And so like both of you are kind of approaching it from that perspective. And it's funny because like both of you can offer each other so much security and safety, but both of you are scared to even go there because of the intensity of the feelings between you two your future spouse so you're gonna get there but both of you are cautious both of you are cautious yeah i told you you're gonna get there we have trust and romance yeah and you know what like because you're in bottom of the deck is patience because you're not rushing into it i think you'll be better for it i mean you know like both of you just have to move at a pace that feels comfortable to you um, you know, like, that's just the name of the game here, for sure. Okay, let's get some spark romance matchsticks for you guys, then we'll use our little grab bag, and then we'll get a message here from your future spouse's higher self, what they want you to know at this time. So let's see. Oh, wait, we're missing some cards. Hold on, guys. Sorry about that. We were supposed to get some messages about their personality, which I know we've already touched on, but let's just get some archetype cards. 
I don't want you guys to feel cheated. <laughs> okay. This card fell to the floor and I'm gonna keep it. We have Fool, because you guys got the Fool card in, um, earlier too. This person's a jokester, <laughs> you know? Like they have that like trickster energy um, where they, they like to, they like to have that, um, verbal banter back and forth. They like to make people laugh. And that may be kind of the thing too, is like everyone else thinks they're so funny, but you know, you're like not giving them that same attention. And so they work extra hard to get you to laugh. Um, I could see that, especially if they're like your coworker or something like that. But yeah, I, I feel like they really try to like win you over. And I feel like that's like the best thing ever for them is when they get you to laugh. They kind of feel like Chandler from Friends. Like that's what their personality feels like to me. Okay. Oh, we have Companion. Yeah, it's like, it's like when you guys actually spend time together and you stop fussing <laughs> and teasing each other and like you you do get along really really well you know it's like again like you met your match like you it's funny because i feel like both of you think you're so different and everybody else is like y'all are the same person and you're like no i'm nothing like them and you're like no like y'all are literally the same person <laughs> that's what it feels like we have messiah here um yeah, like there's something here about like this feels very faded. It feels very divinely guided. It feels like, again, like your guides are high-fiving each other. Like we did good with this pairing. Like this is 100%, um, you know, like what they wanted for you. And I do feel like you're meant to challenge each other because um, it does feel like you're meant to really learn some lessons together and grow together. And we have Angel. Yeah, it's like, it, it really is like Sour Patch Kids. Like you guys, you guys, um, when, when you two uh, really stop <laughs> like all of that, like back and forth banter and you have like a real conversation, there's such a sweetness there. You know, like there's gonna be so much mutual understanding because, because again, like you two are really similar in a lot of ways. And like sometimes when we meet people who are really similar to us, it can be hard to recognize that those traits are being mirrored back to us. And we'll be like, what annoys me about this person? Or like, what about this person is getting under my skin? And it's like, they're me. Like there's so much about this person that reminds me of myself and are there things about myself that i need to heal you know and so it's like that kind of lesson um you know it's reminding me of that 70s show and jackie says if i could run across the beach into my own arms i would that's what it's like falling in love with this person like it's like this is your match okay like this person you know how they say opposites attract mm -mm. Like, you guys think that you're so different, but you guys are the same. You're the same. Like, when it, where it really, really matters, not the superficial stuff, where it really, really matters, you two are the same. You're the same, you know? And you guys are going to help each other heal, which is going to be really beautiful. Um, and I think for a lot of you, it's that emotional vulnerability piece, <laughs> okay? Um, and something about the physical intimacy between you two is also going to be very healing as well. Um, and I do feel like this person has such good intentions. They may mess up, say the wrong thing, you know. Um, they may joke around and think they're being funny and say something hurtful at times, but they have such good intentions. They really do. Um, they have a very pure heart and you probably do too, group three, you know, like it reminds me, um, if you guys ever watched RuPaul's Drag Race, 
it's been a minute, but Bianca, I remember she was so, they were so sweet to one of the other drag stars. And I wish I could remember, cause it's a competition, you know? Um, but even in the midst of a competition, like they were still very sweet and helpful and giving advice to, gosh, I can't remember their name, but anyway, one of the other fellow competitors and this person like they had a really sarcastic sense of humor and they were definitely one of the funniest if not the funniest on that season and they were you know a fan favorite but you know they still even though they would probably be like the least likely or you know the one that you wouldn't expect to be so helpful and kind when it really came down to it they were the most helpful even in the midst of a competition and again like with that hard outer shell you wouldn't expect that you know that sarcastic you know like they were super witty um so clever so good at throwing shade um you wouldn't expect that but they were they were so helpful and sweet and so i feel like you, you know your future spouse has that energy and i think you do too like you, you seem intimidating, but really, like, you're, you have that pure, pure heart. You really do. Both of you do. Okay, let's get into your romance matchsticks now. All the groups were good today. I don't know if, if I have a favorite. Okay, we have set a goal together. Surprise, surprise, you're both ambitious. <laughs> Sorry, I had to pause so you guys wouldn't hear the sirens outside. Um, act like tourist in your own city or town. I really like this because it's sort of like, let's explore familiar places together. You know, like let's, especially like if there are things in, like wherever you live and you're like, you know, I would love to go do that, but I don't want to go do it by myself, you know? Um, or if there's even just seeing like familiar places through a fresh like set of eyes, you know, it's a different experience when you go with someone else, especially someone that you love. Um, that could be things that, you know, you guys do together. And then we have give each other a sincere compliment. I think for some of you that might be hard. It might be hard for you guys to receive a compliment or it's hard for you guys to take a compliment about certain things. Like maybe you're fine with someone complimenting your skills at something, but if someone compliments your physical appearance, maybe that's hard for you. And I think through this person, you're gonna get comfortable with that. You're gonna get better at, you know, receiving a compliment. Okay. Now, if some of these details about your future spouse don't resonate, feel free to leave them. These are always gonna be more specific messages, okay? Group three, your future spouse. What do we need to know? Okay. They could have an unusual hair color. So they could have like dyed hair or they could have highlights or they could have a hair color that's different than like what you typically go for. So maybe you usually date brunettes and this person has blonde hair, something like that. Okay, they could be a teacher, so that could be what they do for their profession, or it could be indicating that this person is just really good at teaching other people other things. So we did talk about how smart they are, how knowledgeable they are. So they could just, you know, have a lot of knowledge about a lot of different things. Um, so maybe this person is someone who has like a great vocabulary, and so they're always using words and other people are like, what does that, what does that word mean, <laughs> you know? Um, or they could be one of those people, you know how some people just know a little bit about everything and they have, they know like all these fun facts or like these little tidbits of history or how things work or, you know, things like that. Um, it could be referring to that as well. We have love language is acts of service. Ooh, 
that might be hard for you. Yeah, because I feel like um, I feel like both of you like to be so independent, and it's like I want to do things for you. No, I can do it myself. But both of you are like that. Like both of you are like trying to handle it all, and you need to ask for help more. You need this. Both of you need this. But I feel like both of you struggle with this. Y'all are so cute. I can't. Okay, empathetic. Oh, I love that. And we have humble. That's important. I like that because we were talking about how they can be like confident. Both of you can be a bit intimidating, but they're not arrogant. And I don't think you are either. I don't know why. I guess it's because you two like have such an enmeshed kind of energy. Like when I'm talking about their personality, I, your energy keeps coming in. <laughs> like, so I feel like, again, there must be a lot of similarities between you two. Okay. So it says, my beloved, though we may be physically apart, spiritually, we are always united. For love transcends space and time. Nothing is missing. Aww. So yeah, if you haven't met this person yet, they're always with you in spirit. And if you do know this person, know that even when you guys aren't physically together, their higher self, their soul is always supporting you. Okay. All right. So group three, this was your reading. Um, again, background is a real work in progress. I'm going to have to play around with it. Um, and it's my own fault because I'm so like impatient and like I want to sit down and I want to film and I'm so excited to get into it that I don't want to mess around with the setup and I need to mess around with the setup <laughs> and figure this out because it's not working. Um, but anyway, hopefully the sound isn't too bad. Hopefully the lighting isn't too bad. And I thank you all for your patience and we will get it figured out. All right, group three, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much for letting me do this reading for you, and please take care.